March, the Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Man, when I get home from work, all Betty does is watch her reality TV and then she goes to sleep. I can take her on romantic dates, I get her flowers, you name it. She's just not the woman I married. Oh, Ralph, that's just awful. Does this seem familiar? Are the honeymoon days of your relationship long gone? If so, consider this. The abundance of chemical additives, pesticides, BPA containers, contaminated tap water, and other toxic substances found in our environment. Experts know our bodies are some and being thrown off balance, especially when it comes to your natural systems. Forget synthetic chemicals. Super Female Vitality brings forward key herbs specifically chosen for women's biology without the use of phony additives. Get your bottle of Super Female Vitality today at InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com, or call 1-888-253-3139. InfoWarsLife.com. Live life healthy. A chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supply worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape, but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Zach, this is Crystal Palace. Sink no rad has declared DEFCON 3. Scramble all alert aircraft. I repeat, scramble all alert aircraft. The Whopper spends all its time thinking about World War III. Target selection complete. Time on target sequence complete. 22 Typhoon class submarines departing Petropavlovsk. Turning south out of North Cap, bearing 095 degrees. Radar reports two unknown tracks are penetrating the Alaskan air defense zone. From the front lines of the information war. Flush the bombers, get the subs in launch mode. We are at DEFCON 1. Are you prepared to destroy the enemy? You bet! Defending the Republic from enemies, foreign and domestic. We'll keep control, but we'll keep it here at the top where it belongs. Three, two, one. Impact. Shall we play a game? How about global thermal nuclear war? Live. From the InfoWars.com studios, it's Alex Jones. All units confirm weapons targeted and ready, awaiting launch codes. We are in a launch mode. Do you really believe that the enemy would attack without provocation? If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. We're in. Russians are still denying everything, sir. We have a Soviet submarine launch detection. I wish I didn't know about any of this. I wish I was like everybody else. Thanks, Dan. The only winning move is not to play. And 
right, as we see the escalation of the Cold War, as we see it being brought back with events in the Ukraine and the administration pushing there, we also see the re-escalation of Iraq. And we've been talking to Peter Van Buren, a man who is a 24-year veteran of the State Department. He spent a year in Iraq. He wrote a book on it when he came back, How I Helped Lose the Battle for the Hearts and Minds of the Iraqi People. The title was We Met Well, and his website is wemetwell.com. We were talking just before the break, and I, I want to get back to that about uh, Rand Paul's comments last night on Sean Hannity, saying that uh, one of the reasons that ISIS is stronger is that we've been allied with them in Syria, and we've been funding Islamic rebels. But before I do, Peter, uh, let me remind our listeners that uh, this hour is brought to them by My Patriot Supply, and of course, with the unrest that we see, the collapse of the border with soaring meat prices, it's clear that there is no longer time to wait. You need to start getting prepared today. Get on over to MyPatriotSupply.com and check out their complete line of preparedness products. My Patriot Supply is the home of the Patriot Pantry line of emergency food storage. If you don't have food, you're no threat to the new world order. They're counting on you to be ever-dependent slaves to their system of control, but you can fight back and establish independence for you and your family by securing your own private supply of storable food. There's no better way to prepare than this Patriot-owned company. Visit MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex for some special offers to listeners of this broadcast. For a limited time, they're offering additional discounts off their already low prices. That website again is MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex. And as I was just saying, uh, Peter, uh, talking about the New World Order, and we look at the uh, lyrics we came in just in the first segment when you came in with us, we were playing uh, Bruce Springsteen's song about the ghost of Tom Joad. The, uh, that's the title of your book, The Ghost of Tom Joad, A Story of the 99%. And in that he says, Welcome to the New World Order. Families sleeping in their cars in the Southwest, no home, no job, no peace, no rest. I want to get to that, but you were just starting to talk about what had happened in Libya. And of course, we've been told by Steve Pachinik and others that in their opinion, what was happening was something of an internecine warfare between the CIA, one group trying to stop the other group from arming terrorists that they were going to use as surrogates. What's your take on what happened in Libya? A lot of people believe that the American facility in, in Benghazi, and we do need to stop calling it a, a consulate. It was not a State Department uh, consulate. It was a U.S. government facility that appeared to be staffed primarily by CIA and so-called ex-military uh, uh, contractors, if you will. And many people believe that one of their most important jobs there was gathering up uh, weapons off the Libyan battlefield, primarily shoulder-fired anti-aircraft uh, uh, missiles and transshipping those to Syria. It's important if you're the United States and you're trying to supply weapons to bad guys that your fingerprints are not obviously on them. And so there's no easier way to do that than to pick up weapons in one part of the Middle East, put them on a third country ship and send them off to another part of the Middle East. And it's very possible that, that was what was going on in Benghazi. But regardless, it's critical to understand that the United States has been supporting the Sunni uh, rebels, insurgents, gangsters, thugs, whatever word you want to apply, in Syria, as have our purported allies in Kuwait and Saudi Arabia. The fact that these thugs have decided now to stick with their more uh, deeply felt allegiances to their brothers in Iraq instead of fighting America's proxy war in Syria should surprise absolutely no one. That's right. And, and it's the same people that are essentially pushing these endless wars, I believe, that are the 1% uh, of the 1%. Tell us now, I want to move on to your, your new book, The uh, Ghosts of Tom Joad, A Story of the 99%. Tell us about that book. Tell us what you're uh, talking about there. Ghosts of Tom Joad is a look at the last 50 years of American life. It starts out in right after World War II, when people were able to come home from the wars to have jobs waiting for them, when there were union jobs, factory jobs, jobs for white collar people, there were jobs for everyone. And it was possible by working hard to support your family, better yourself, maybe look forward to a better life for, for your kids than you had. That life in America stood for 30-some years until the middle of the 1970s, 
when some political decisions and some insights from America's corporate leaders that basically they could make as much money or more making things overseas as they could here in the United States, changed the way our life works. Up until 1973, the growth curves of the rich and the middle class rose about the same percentages, about 6% for each. The rich obviously got richer, but the middle class also saw their wealth and their wages rise. We went over the top of that hill in the mid-1970s, and since then, the amount of money, and with it, the amount of control that a very small number of Americans, the 1% have, has gone skyrocketing, while the amount of money and wealth and thus power the middle class has, has fallen dramatically. The Ghost of Tom Joe tells that story with some detail, but more in the sense of a human scale. There's plenty of great books about economics out there with lots of math in them. My book doesn't have any numbers. It doesn't have any math or any formulas in it. It's about people. It's about us. It's about the lives we lead, the country that we had, and the hopes that, that Dave, we might become better people than what we are now. I think that was what was so powerful about the Grapes of Wrath. And I'm reminded of, uh, of course, that was uh, Steinbeck. I'm reminded of Hemingway's The Sun Also Rises, where mm -hmm. a character there was asked, how did he go bankrupt? And he said, well, basically two ways. First, gradually, then suddenly. I think we've been going gradually bankrupt in this country, and now there's a sense from, I think, everybody, in terms of every metric that we see, that this is happening Suddenly, this is starting to accelerate. We're starting to hit the yes. knee of the curve. We're starting to go exponential. There's a real dread from people as to what's around the corner. We've seen what happens with the Rust Belt, but do we have a kind of dust bowl depression in our future? And, and I think a lot of this, you're talking about, you know, how wealth has come to uh, be consolidated in the hands of a very, very few people. Mm -hmm. As we see the consolidation of corporations, we also see the consolidation of governments, don't we, and things like NAFTA. And now we have these secret trade agreements, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the Transatlantic Partnership being negotiated where these large multinational corporations are essentially going to be given sovereign power on the level of former sovereign states. What ghosts of Tom Jode says is that these things are, are not by accident. These aren't the magic of, of the free markets. These aren't uh, what we've come to call capitalism mm -hmm. uh, doing what it does. No. What we're seeing is the result of very conscious decisions by a very few people uh, in Washington, in some corporate uh, executive suites, to try to take it all. Whereas there always were rich people and there always were poor people, for a lot of years in, in the United States, there was always enough for people in the middle class. And there was always the promise of maybe a little bit more, particularly if you were willing to, to work hard. That has been taken away from us. We've recreated instead of the middle class something your listeners and everyone out there already knows, and that's the thing we call the working poor. Yes. About two-thirds of the people who receive food stamps or food benefits are working people. These aren't welfare queens, as, as the expression goes. These aren't people laying on their couch because they're, they're too lazy to work or too, don't, they don't want to work. They just want to live off the, the government. That isn't the case. These are working people. One out of every five children in the United States is in a food insecure situation. This is us that we're talking about, and we've been placed here by a small group of people who wants it all. Look, the CEO of Walmart, if you took his uh, yearly salary and divided it into, say, a 50-hour work week, makes over $4,000 an hour. Oh. People there oh. in, in your listening area, if they work at Walmart, are hoping to pull down 7 or $8 an hour, and that's based on the 20, maybe 30 hours a week they can squeeze out of it. Lazy people? I don't think so. Most of the working people that I know are trying to hold down two, maybe three jobs, hoping to put together enough money to take care of themselves and their family. All that money's going someplace, and it's going, I'm afraid, straight up. You know, you're talking about how, how jobs uh, moved out of this country, were exported to China and elsewhere. Those were manufacturing jobs, essentially, at the beginning. 
Now what we're looking at is a future where even service